You know you're gonna see the best of the worst with the shit flick critic. You know you're gonna see shit that's absurd with the shit flick critic. From Pandemic the Room, Samurai Cop Troll 2, Man of Sense of Fame, Miami Connection 2. So come along, see the worst with me, I'm the shit flick critic. G'day everyone, it's me, Andrew Lewis, the Shit Flick Critic. And before I get started today, I'd just like to give a reminder to anyone who hasn't subscribed, please subscribe, uh, tick the little bell thing so when I upload my next video, you won't miss out. And uh, speaking of subscribers, I've got an idea I'd like to run past everyone. It's called Subscriber Spotlight. So I figure um, at the beginning of my videos, I'm just gonna dedicate like 15 seconds to 30 seconds max to put up a video that one of you will send me. Um, it could either be just like a well wish or even just a little plug for your own channels um, because I really, really do value my subscribers and it is all of you that motivate me to make more episodes and, you know, just fill me up with so much enthusiasm. So I thought to give back. Um, it'd also just be nice to see one of your faces because, you know, when you just see subscribers X amount, um, it's kind of hard to visualize it. So please send me a video. I'll have my um, email down here. Please send it to andrewlewis90 at hotmail.com. That's all one word. Send me a video. And the first person that gets in, I'll put at the beginning of my next big review. But with all that being said, let's jump into it. So today's review is going to be a film that almost destroyed the careers of basically everyone involved. And that's Howard the Duck. Somewhere in the universe is Howard's world. A world almost exactly like ours. I just want to know how I'm going to get back. This is Dr. Walter Jennings. I told him all about you, Howard. I can explain how you got here. Did you really send him back? He would have to leave tonight. It exploded again. It was terrible. Where's Dr. Jennings? He was pre-activating the laser spectroscope. Uh-huh. And caught the full force of the blast this time. This does not bode well. Howard the Duck is a sci-fi comedy made in 1986 and was written and directed by Willard Hewick, Willard Hewick, Willard Hewick, along with his wife, Gloria Katz. The executive producer was George Lucas, who was a big fan of the Howard the Duck comics and had intended to make a Howard the Duck adaptation after production on American Graffiti had finished. Due to the unexpected success of Star Wars, however, Lucas was busy for the next decade with the subsequent movies. In 1985, after filming of the original Star Wars trilogy had wrapped, Lucas was going through a very costly divorce and had also just finished building his $10 million Skywalker ranch. Lucas was desperate for a project to improve his financial situation and decided that the world was ready for a film adaptation of Howard the Duck. The Howard the Duck comic series, written by Steve Gerber, began in 1973 and was published by Marvel Comics. It was a mostly dark and satirical comic series that poked fun at the genre of fiction in general and was intended for a mature audience. Lucas elicited the help of Willard Hayuhuk and Gloria Katz, who he had gone to film school with and who had co-wrote American Graffiti, had writing credits on Star Wars and who had wrote the screenplay for Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. On a side note, The Temple of Doom was made at a time when both Steven Spielberg and George Lucas were both knee-deep in their respective divorces, which in turn led to the darker tone and all the visual metaphors of hearts being torn out of chests. The film was optioned to Universal Studios, and because the studio had previously rejected Lucas films that became a smash hit, they took a chance on Howard the Duck, hoping it would be the next big summer blockbuster. It wasn't. The initial idea was for the film to be animated in the style of the comics, but Universal Studio wanted the picture released in 1986, and animation was a lengthy process. It was then decided that Howard would be played by a little person wearing an animatronic head, similar to the character of Hoggle in The Labyrinth, a film which was being shot around the same time and also produced by George Lucas. 
Ed Gale, the actor who was inside the Howard the Duck suit, has said that 19 different heads were required during filming due to hard knocks or environmental damage, all of which cost a whooping $50,000 to replace. As the head was operated by radio signals from a remote control by a team of operators, any time a plane would pass overhead or someone would use another remote nearby on the same frequency, the head would malfunction, further delaying production, which in turn made Howard the Duck even more expensive to shoot. A tie-in video game was also produced called Howard the Duck Escape from Volcano Island and was released for many platforms including the classic Commodore 64. Man, I remember those cheesy ads that used to be on those videos that my parents taped in the 80s. I can't believe I used to like that song. In a world of modern fantasy and ever-changing views and computer Probably the most jarring thing about Howard the Duck Escape from Volcano Island are the painful sound effects that make me feel sorry for any parent whose child was playing in the next room. I don't know what this movie's about. It doesn't make any sense. I don't know what to say. Why don't you just say that I'm... Oh. Alright, Brad. Mr. Work Experience. Why don't you sit down here and tell us what it's about then? Howard the Duck is a film about an anthropomorphic duck named Howard who lives in an alternate dimension and where the progenitor of the dominant species wasn't an ape but a duck and after a science experiment on Earth goes awry using a spectroscope he gets sucked through a portal into Cleveland and then now must try and find a way to get back while also dealing with the fact that he's not in his own natural habitat. It was pretty good. Well done. Oh, thank you. Hmm. Now get out of here, you're fired. Show me up. I know I shouldn't take the plot to Howard the Duck too seriously, but there's a lot of inconsistencies evolving the whole alternate dimension thing that really annoy me. Like when Howard lands on Earth, the first thing that he does is ask where he is and is perplexed when he's told that he's in Cleveland and on Earth. Cleveland? Cleveland. Despite the fact that when Beverly goes through his wallet, she finds money that appears to be American, except it says the United States of Anatiaid. Two guesses what that means. That kind of implies that there must have been a duck British colony that seceded after fighting a duck revolutionary war under the command of, I don't know, George Quackington, similar to the United States today. So it just surprises me that Howard's never heard of Cleveland, as there must be some sort of duck equivalent in his world called, I don't know, Quackland. I'm looking into this too deeply, aren't I? Howard also just seems to know that in this universe, ducks are merely animals, incapable of speaking and primarily used as food or pets. We never get a scene where Howard reacts to a duck in real life and tries to speak with it or something. When they go to the diner later in the film, Howard seems more upset by the fact that humans eat chicken eggs than, I don't know, the duck corpses hanging in the kitchen? The biggest problem with Howard the Duck is tone. It just couldn't decide what kind of movie it wanted to be. It makes me wonder what it must have been like being in the boardroom at Universal in the late 80s when they were discussing Howard the Duck. Look, all I'm saying is the comic book that Howard the Duck is based on was made for a mature audience. So this thing's got to be R-rated, MA15+. plus. You know, we got to chuck lots of classy adult jokes in there that, you know, the adults will enjoy. Yes, yes, I understand. But I just want you to be aware that if we made this a mature movie, then we would lose revenue in sales from any would-be child that would go to the theater. So I think PG would be the preferred rating for Howard the Duck. It's just like talking about parental guidance. The comic book was made for mature audience. I feel like you're you know, being all very you ever do is just flap, flap, flap your mouth. You know what I'm saying? Guy out. Tone. Gentlemen, gentlemen, please do calm down. Can't we have both? You know, what are you talking about? My suggestion is, let's make a movie that for all intents and purposes is a PG rated movie so we don't alienate any children from the audience and just sprinkle it with some adult humour. And I have two words for the both of you. Duck tits. 
Duck tits. Duck tits. Duck tits. Yeah, 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 yeah. Duck yeah. tits. Yeah, yeah, that could work. Yeah, look, I'm sorry, guys. I, I apologize mean, as well. Why were they in a the kitchen? Yes, for a movie aimed at children, there is not just one but two shots of duck breasts, and both are within the first 10 minutes of the film and have absolutely no bearing on the plot. And indeed, there are a lot of other adult moments sprinkled in, the most disturbing of which is a scene where Beverly and Howard discuss the possibility of being intimate with one another. Let's go for it, Mr. Macho. I know, right? It's like, Beverly, slow down, you just met the guy. Oh yeah, and he's a duck. There are also a lot of lingering shots on Beverly's female anatomy. One of them is kind of in context, if not still disturbing, and the other one is partway through a dramatic scene where they focus on Beverly's underwear seemingly just because they could. Beverly also finds a tiny duck man-sized condom in Howard's wallet, which for some reason is not in its packaging. There's an entire scene that revolves around Howard getting a job at an adult spa because the owner asked the job agency for a water expert to fix his broken spa. We seem to have a plugged up air jet. You are supposed to be the water expert I asked for. Do you mean plumber? The job agency lady believes that Howard is fit for the job given his experience as a duck, even though she also seems convinced that he's just someone dressed up as a duck to get attention. You think that by looking controversial, you're never gonna find a job. And then this happens. I think I got just the position for you. Hmm. I'm not sure what Howard was intending to do. I can only just imagine how degrading it was for the poor actress playing the job agency lady. Okay, okay, okay. So here's the scene. You're going to bend over. We're going to get a real nice close-up of your tuchus. And that's when the anthropomorphic child-sized duck alien creature is going to try and sandwich his duck bill in between your butt cheeks. Howard the Duck is also woefully underpopulated by any swear words for a film that is trying to be aimed at a mature audience. The only swear word in the film is censored, despite the fact that it was said during a live TV interview. Every hunter can blast 15 of those from the sky. The most frustrating thing about Howard the Duck is the jokes, or lack thereof, sprinkled throughout the film. 90% of them are just duck puns, and by puns I mean substituting a word with duck. No more Mr. Nice Duck. No one laughs at a master of quack foo. They even miss some of the more obvious jokes. Maybe after this guy sees Howard, he thinks to himself, a talking duck. I need to see a quack. It's not funny, but it's better than what we got. At the halfway point of the film, we are introduced to the film's antagonist after Jeffrey Jones' character, Professor Jennings, is the victim of a scientific experiment gone awry and turned into Jeffrey Jones now. Most of the jokes for the next hour are centered around everyone not acknowledging that there's something dreadfully wrong with Jennings and just hand-waving it with another excuse like, I remember when I had my first beer. This is why I hate the night shift. <laughs> He must eat the chili. Wow. These Washington guys take a real beating on these junkets. He's an alien. At one point of the film, Jennings abducts Beverly and takes her back to the science lab to call down some more evil aliens when police are conducting something called a smog inspection. This is a smog device inspection. After Jennings murders one of the police officers and then explodes every car in front of him, leaving their truck suspiciously unharmed, he turns to Beverly and says, Smog inspection. <laughs> Is that a joke? There are a lot of action scenes in Howard the Duck that are extremely pointless and boring. Due to the physical limitations of the Howard suit, the fighting scenes all revolve around Howard either throwing someone to the ground to effectively hit them or standing on an elevated surface like a bar or in the diner's case, a counter. So after Howard and Beverly learn that Professor Jennings is no longer Jennings but a dark overlord of the universe, they decide to celebrate that fact with a trip to the diner. After a bunch of dismally unfunny exchanges with the waitress, they are then harassed by a bunch of rednecks, all with thick southern accents, despite the fact that this is a diner in Cleveland. Hey, look at the talking duck. Bug off. Lord, what is that? Well, that there is the prettiest duck I ever did see. A fight then breaks out, which basically entails Howard standing on the counter and holding pies out, and all the truckers launching themselves into said pies. And they're not even tripping, they're literally just jamming their faces into the pie tins. The other action scenes all involve vehicles, and the only thing that makes them dramatic is that in both instances, someone is driving who obviously shouldn't be. In the car chase scene, Howard and Beverly elect Jennings to drive, even though he is actively turning into a dark overlord of the universe. The whole scene goes on for quite some time without anyone thinking that maybe they should pull over 
and let someone else drive. The second chase scene is a painfully long police chase in a stunt plane where Phil lets Howard fly the plane despite clearly having more knowledge of how it's operated. Right pedal, right pedal. Ah! Phil lets Howard fly because, as he says, In prehistoric times you flew! Yeah. Which makes about as much sense as me saying that I should be able to operate a submarine because at some point in my human evolution, I was a fish. The scene goes for an excruciating 10 minutes and ends in what I believe is the most visually disturbing scene of the whole film. Filthy help! <laughs> Filthy help me! <laughs> Never heard of a duck that couldn't swim! Shut up and save me! One can only imagine how absolutely traumatizing shooting this scene was for poor Ed Gale, having no vision and experiencing the sensation of water slowly filling up his duck mask. An experience I can only imagine would be similar to being waterboarded, not helped by the fact that he does actually appear to be physically struggling. When How the Duck was released, it was universally panned by the critics and won the 1986 Golden Raspberry Award for Worst Picture along with another film, Under the Cherry Moon. Howard the Duck effectively destroyed the screen careers of Willard and Glory, and other than a few small writing credits, neither of them have worked on a theatrical release since. It also caused Frank Price to step down from his position as head of Universal, and also allegedly caused a fistfight between himself and MCA head Sid Sheinberg, although both men deny it happened. It had a budget of 37 million, which was gigantic at the time, almost double the budget of any other Hollywood movie, and was only able to break even, destroying George Lucas's hopes of making enough money to recover from his divorce. After The Labyrinth was also a bomb that same year, George began selling assets, and one of those assets was a smaller group created by Lucas within Industrial Light and Magic. They were known as the Graphics Group, who were, fittingly, designed to focus solely on computer animation. Steve Jobs, after hearing of his friend Lucas's plight, offered to buy the graphics group for 5 million and invest another 5 million in capital to him to help his financial woes. After the group was purchased, they changed their name to a little company you've probably never heard of called Pixar. So if How the Duck didn't exist, neither would Toy Story and all your other favorite Pixar movies. So every cloud. Rating. Laughability. Um, not really. I didn't really laugh that much in How the Duck. I was too busy uh, just feeling really uncomfortable by all the strange sexual stuff. Number two, rewatchability. Um, not that much. I think I've probably seen How the Duck now twice, and that's plenty. Three, pace. Yeah, um, this movie goes for two hours, and I just think that's too long. You know, the chase scenes go on forever. There's just lots of very elongated scenes that don't really feel like they eventuate into much so yeah not very good pacing number four production value i mean yeah if there's anything about how a duck you can say was done well was just it had so much money pumped into it and you know the effects are really good um you know the the cinematography is really good the all the acting's fine for the most part yeah so uh i wouldn't say how it was made is the worst thing about it and number five intention I mean, once again, it boils down to that if you do something solely to make money, it probably isn't going to work out. And how the duck was made just to inflate uh, Lucas's dwindling bank account. Uh, it wasn't made with a lot of heart and passion. And I just think it shows. And that's why I think it's a terrible film. So all in all, I give how the duck minus two stars. It's worth checking out, but I wouldn't go out of your way. So thank you very much for watching The Shit Flick Critic. I should have my next review up. Uh, it seems like two to three weeks is about the mark at the moment. Um, once again, with the subscriber spotlight, if you could please send me to my email, I'll put it again down the bottom, a 15 or 30 second clip. Um, the first one I'll put at the beginning of my next big review. And that's it. So if you would, oh, I'm sorry. I gotta go, but um, see you in the next review. Bye.